Hi everyone, it's Paul from this design that. Let's jump straight into this. We've got the lab scan on the left and we've got the drum scan on the right. Straight away you can see that there is quite a difference in the, the color of the raw scans. I think the drum scan on the right is definitely a more realistic look. I do actually quite like the lab scan in the color shift that it's added. It does feel very kind of futuristic and dystopian, which is kind of what I was going for with this image. Now, first off, this image was definitely underexposed, and it's the reason why I sent it. I wasn't expecting amazing results with this scan, but really I just wanted to see if a drum scan was able to salvage some of the image. The underpass was, as you can see, it's very underexposed and the drum scan wasn't really able to bring out any more detail than the lab scan. Maybe a little bit more, but as you'll see when we kind of zoom in, there is quite a lot of noise. Now I was speaking to Tim uh, who did the scan and he said that for this scan, he, he used a smaller aperture, which will bring out more noise, but it gives you a better chance of getting some resolution in, in the shadows. The drum scan is definitely looking sharper and we're not even at full magnification here. If we go one to one, we can zoom in even more. So the resolution is obviously going to be much, much better, but let's just try and bring out a little bit more. And if we look at kind of like this underpass area just up here, it's looking a little bit less blotchy. I guess that's just the resolution here. Um, but yeah, it isn't bringing out any more detail. It hasn't magically saved this image. So moving on to the edited images. Now I've, I've tried to boost these up as much as possible just to kind of see what details that we've got in the underpass. And again, I, I don't think there's really that much between them. Here we can actually see quite a bit of detail on this underpass here with the, with the stains. And you can't really see much here. I could maybe boost this a little bit more in the drum scan, but you'll see when we zoom in, the noise is is quite apparent. So if we just kind of like zoom into this area here, so here is a magnified section here. You can see that obviously there is, there is quite a bit of noise in both of these images. I think that the drum scan is slightly more sharper, but you know, I don't really think there's that much between them. Again, it's a little bit sharper in some areas with the drum scan. And you know, even if I come into uh, the development here, and if we try and bring up the shadows quite a bit, you can see that I think that the lab scan is actually kind of getting a little bit more detail in this underpass section. I think the watermarks here are a little bit more clearer than the drum scan, but you can see we start bringing it up and, and it really does introduce a lot of noise into the image. You know, the noise can be taken out in post-processing, uh, so that's not too much of a problem really want to try and get as much detail as possible in the raw scan. But yeah, I just thought this was interesting to show. I thought it was a, a really good example actually of how regardless of what scanning technique you use, if your negative isn't good to start off with, the, the, the image, the final outcome isn't going to be any better regardless of the scan that you use. So I've concluded that a drum scan isn't going to magically save your images, but what can you do to avoid that problem altogether? And this is pretty much the biggest tip I can give anyone who is starting to do film photography, especially if they are doing nighttime photography, and it is to always meter for the shadows. And there's been a few experiments online that you can find where people have been able to get almost five stops of overexposure dialed back down into a usable image. If you underexpose though, there is no chance of recovering that image. As you can see, this image has got quite a lot of contrast in it. You've got this underpass, which is very, very underexposed. Then you've got these highlighted areas where this digital screen in the background is, is projecting light. So there was a big contrast here. Now I'm guessing that I probably exposed for maybe up here, which was more of kind of a mid-tone. But what I should have done is I should have just metered for one of the darkest areas. I probably should have metered maybe around here or maybe just under here. Now this was shot on Ektar 100. So my limitations were probably the ISO. I probably wanted to keep the shutter speed up to a point where this image just wouldn't be blurry. I was probably at a 30th of a second of a shutter speed here, which is really the lowest I can go down to when I was shooting handheld. And I was shooting handheld for this shot, I know that for sure. And also I didn't have a shutter release. 
and that is something really, really important if you are shooting at night. If I would have exposed for this area, this image and this scan would have come back much more overexposed. But it's not a problem because you can dial back down the highlights and you could have got the, the shadows properly exposed on this image and it would have probably been much, much better of an image. So if I can give you one tip from this, it's not to rely on scanning techniques. Drum scans are not gonna solve your bad negatives. Really, you need to get it right when you're out on the field and you're taking pictures and that is to always meter for the shadows if you are ever unsure of what to meter. I've got more drum scans to go through, so stay tuned because I've got a few more videos to do about this topic. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all later.